Hi everyone! So today I am super excited to bring you this video. I've been wanting to bring you this video for a couple of months but I was waiting for the books to arrive and that is kind of an introduction to the Penguin Pocket Classics which are coming out later on this month. Um, as soon as I read the press release back in February that they were coming out with these I immediately emailed Penguin and requested review copies and they were kind enough to send me five out of the 20 that they're publishing. Um, they let me pick the five that I wanted. So I thought this would be a good video to kind of like talk about what they are, what kind of the premise is, where you can get them, um, and talk about the five that I picked. I did pick all Russian and French authors. Um, they are, what I like about these is that each work, like the color of the book, um, represents the language that it was originally translated from. So red is Russian, and then this dark blue is French, um, orange is English, I think there's like a lighter blue for Italian and then there's like a green color for German. And I don't know 100% all the colors but I will link that all down below. Um, I will link the Pocket Penguins website where you can see the full list. I will also link all the books that I'm talking about today and I will include a general link that will have all of the Pocket Penguins that are being released. I have noticed when I went on Book Depository that they are also releasing some later on in August so this is going to continue on. They're going to keep publishing but the initial run is just 20 ish like editions. So what's really great about these is that they're kind of a really, they're, they're a step back in a way for Penguin. Like they're, they're really simple. They're very reminiscent of the popular Penguins, which you can get in Australia. Um, I own one or two of those and I quite like them, um, but they're really hard to get here. And so I'm really excited about these. These are a really good size. I'm going to grab one of my Penguin English libraries, which are the basic trade, and they're quite a bit smaller. Um, than them. So you can kind of see the size difference there. They're quite a bit shorter and not quite as wide um, height wise on the shelf. So that's really nice. Um, I do like a smaller book. They're kind of similar. I'm going to pull out one of my vintages that are sitting behind me. Similar in height to the vintage, a little bit taller than the vintage uh, editions of Jane Austen and the Brontes that have come out. But um, still that kind of lower profile which is really nice. So as I mentioned the different colors represent the different languages that they were translated from and I did end up accidentally picking three Russian and two French authors because when I looked at the list I picked authors that I kind of had read before or really wanted to get to so I thought I would go through that first. So the first one I have here is actually number three and it is Leo Tolstoy's The Cossacks and Hadij Murat. I'm probably butchering that. Um, so this one I picked because I do love Leo Tolstoy. I have read War and Peace and Anna Karenina and The Death of Ivan Illich and I hadn't read The Cossacks or Hadij Murat so I thought why not? I am slowly working my way through his bibliography. So yes. Um, on the inside flap they have this kind of darkened grey with a quote on it. This one says, he said Shamil had ordered Hadidji Murat to be taken dead or alive. Doesn't really give too much away. On the back it's got the barcode in the centre with both the UK and the Canadian pricing um, and then it's got a short little summary which I will quickly read to you guys. Two masterly Russian tales of freedom, fighting and great warriors in the majestic mountains of the Caucasus. Um, inspired by Tolstoy's years as a soldier living among the Cossack people. Uh, so yes, I'm really looking forward to getting these. This is the third one. I, they also have the numbers on the spine, so it says number three. This is one thing I'm not in love with because it means I have to get all of them because it's going to bother me if I just have, um, you know, certain, like if I'm missing a number. I don't know if you guys are like that, but you know I have collector's mentality. So having them all neatly lined up with their numbers, um, they're quite floppy, I would say. Like they're, they're not as stiff as the Penguin English Libraries. They do open quite well. Um, the typesetting is really nice. It's it's not too small. I've been finding recently, because I've been working a lot of shift work and a lot of really early mornings, that I do not like small font in my books. Uh, it really makes me struggle to read because of, obviously, given the fact that I have huge glasses, um, I have really poor eyesight and when I'm tired it makes it really hard to focus. So I think this is a good font size. I also like that the numbers are on the side of the pages rather than at the top or the bottom. Um, so yeah, I really, really like that. So that's the first one I have. The next one is the actual first one in the series and that is Emile Zola's The Beast Within. As you guys know, I have read Therese Reckon by 
to Emil Zola and I really enjoyed it so as soon as I saw that there was a Zola work on there I snapped it up. So the summary on the back is Zola's tense gripping psychological thriller of adultery, corruption, and murder on the French railways is a graphic and violent exploration of the darkest recesses of the criminal mind. So it sounds somewhat similar to True Sarkin. I'm really looking forward to this because I absolutely adore True Sarkin. Um, I have read that this is one of his like masterpieces so I'm looking forward to that. Um, the inside kind of quote is the train the train ran on without a driver and on and on like some mindless unseen beast seems interesting um font similar very similar to the other ones uh, i really like how easily these open um it's just it holds itself open and it's not bending the spine at all which is really nice now these don't come with an introduction this is my one one little qualm about this is that they don't come with an introduction, which I tend to like with, especially with translated works, especially with not necessarily fully understanding the surrounding like time period and stuff like that. But these are like being represented as a very pared down. They just have, you know, they do have notes in the back on translations. Um, so that's great, but there is no introduction with these. So if you're looking for works with introductions, these might not be for you, but I do really like these. These are also fairly reasonable. They're generally around like six pounds UK or like $13 Canadian. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited about these <laughs> in case nobody noticed. Uh, so the next one is Ivan Turnagiv's uh, Fathers and Sons, which is number 14 in the series. Now I have read First Love by Turnagiv, which I really enjoyed in, it, which is a short novella. And so when I saw that this was there and I was talking with Yamini when I was making this decision, this is a really hard decision, by the way, when you're handed a list of 20 books and you want all of them and they're like, pick five. And you're just like, did it in a really quick 15 minute break at work and email Penguin went back with the ones that I wanted. So I picked this one. Uh, the back says, this humane movie masterpiece of families, love, duels, heartache, failure, and the clash between generations caused a scandal in 19th century Russia with its portrayal of youthful nihilism. Sounds interesting. The inside quote says, aristocracy, liberalism, progress, principles, useless words, a Russian doesn't need them. So I'm feeling like this is going to be a very Russian novel. I realize it is a Russian novel, but it's going to be, I feel, very critical of the Russian system, as I find some Russian works are. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading this one. This is the shortest one that I have. It's only like 200 pages, so I'll probably get to this one first. Next up is Guy du Maupassant's A Parisian Affair. This is number 11 in the series. Um, I haven't read anything by Maupassant yet, um, but I he was on my list of authors that I wanted to get to, so I took this opportunity to get this work. Um, the back says, sparkling, darkly humorous tale of high society, playboys, courtesans, peasants, sex, and savagery in 19th century France from the father of the short story. Seems interesting, I'm looking forward to that. Um, the inside uh, quote is, nowhere could she discover the dens of inequity about which she had dreamed. Hmm. Sounds like, you know, very, it sounds very French. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. Um, and then the final one is one that's been on my wish list for quite a while. This was recommended to me by Yamini. She said I would absolutely love it. So when I saw that this was on the list, I had to pick this up. And this is number 20. Um, and it is Mikhail Bolg... Bulgakov's The Master and Margarita. Um, so the back says, this ribald carnivalesque satire featuring the devil, true love, and a gun-toting cat was written in the darkest days of the Soviet Union and became an underground sensation. Okay, there's a gun-toting cat. Looking forward to this one. Um, this is very high on my list of ones that I want to get to. And the inside quote says, manuscripts don't burn. Okay interesting. I don't know where to go with that. I mean, does the cat say it? Because he carries a gun, so I'm assuming he can speak. But yes, so that is my introduction to the Penguin Pocket Classics. Um, I hope you guys like this video. I do really enjoy these. I am so excited that they're coming out. Now I have to order the next 15 of them and then all the ones that are coming out later in the month. So if you're looking for some kind of good, easy penguins to read, I actually love the fact that they do this. I'm just... ah. Uh, they open so easily. You know, sometimes you get books, and they don't open easily, and you're like trying not to crack your spine. These just do it so well, and they don't 
this isn't cracking the spine at all. I haven't even prepped this book. Like, you know how you kind of like you open them up and you spread out the pages? This, like, you don't need to do that with these. Oh, this fills my heart with so much joy. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys later on in the week with another video. Bye!